<clears throat> okay, so yeah, we were discussing about the uh, log normal distribution last time. So let's see. So I wrote down some de derivations for its uh, PDF or probability density function from the normal distribution. So basically, log normal distribution means so you have a random variable that you have, and then uh, you take the row, uh, log log of it. So uh, if you have x, then the log of x, which can be represented as another variable y. So this guy is following the normal distribution that has a, a mean of mu and then the, stand, uh, the variance of a, st a sigma squared. So here we first consider the uh, cumulative distribution function. So in, in the case of cumulative distribution mm -hmm. function for this x that you're interested in, then uh, we consider this uh, constant k and then consider all the uh, probability of x being less than or equal to the specified uh, value of k. So we consider this probability and the, the function for this probability is called the cumulative distribution function. And then using y, so from here x is represented of uh, e to the power of y. And then this guy, since exponential function is a monotonically increasing function, it does not change the sign, so we keep the, we keep the same uh, direction or uh, this inequality, uh, uh, inequality uh, operator. And then this guy is y, and this k becomes log k. So we basically uh, took the log, yeah, logarithm on each side of uh, uh, e, e to the power of y and then k. So up to this point, um, yeah. Uh, so we are, uh, so we can understand up to this point, and then since so the reason for changing x to y is because we only specify the probability density function or the cumulative uh, distribution function for the new variable y because uh, y is following the normal distribution. So we don't directly know what the distribution x follows, but we know uh, the uh, e to the power of uh, the log of an x or uh, the new random variable y uh, is following the uh, uh, normal distribution. So representing this cumulative distribution, we take the uh, yeah, we take the um, integral from minus infinity to log k that we are given on this right hand side. And then we put this definition of a probability density function for normal distribution. So again, y is following the normal distribution of mu and sigma squared. And so this is just typical definition of uh, probability density function for a normal distribution. Right? And then here, what we do is to change. So, so the overall proof is as follows. So we change the variable y in this integral representation into x. So we replace x with y. And then we will get a new um, integral form. And then we take the derivative of it uh, with respect to x. And that way, we obtain the probability density function for um, x. So here, so following this uh, overall or high level uh, steps, so we first change the variable y to x. So instead of y, uh, we replace this guy, log x, from the definition of this new random variable y. Okay, and then uh, we take the derivative on each side. And so here we have dy on the left hand side and then on the right hand side we have 1 over x times dx. 
so we replace uh, this y here as this log x okay so this part was replaced with the uh, log x and then let's see this dy was re uh, replaced with 1 over x times dx okay and then we do one more thing so here we take the um, integral from minus infinity to log k so that was for y and then uh, this range will become another range of for x so still uh, when y becomes minus infinity and then up oh, sorry here is uh, one typo here so this should be zero because minus infinity for y is representing zero for a uh, log of uh, uh, minus infinity is representing i mean the corresponding to log zero okay so instead of minus infinity we change it to zero and then log k uh, when y is log k and then k will become k okay so <clears throat> this way yeah this way we obtain yeah we obtained the um, cumulative distribution function for x right so if we recall where we started <clears throat> we started from here right so we first considered uh, the cumulative distribution function for x and then we changed it to uh, yeah to another representation or expression for uh, uh, y which follows the normal distribution and that way we were able to plug this definition of a normal distribution into this integral form and then within this um, representation or within this mathematical exp expression we change it y to x that we are interested in and this is the result okay okay so <clears throat> so when uh, this cumulative distribution function is represented represented in this way and then um, let's see this part So this part will become your new probability density function. Okay, so what was the probability density function and its relationship to the cumulative distribution function? So if we have, for example, like the random variable of z being less than or equal to k. So this is a cumulative distribution function for a continuous random variable of z and then the definition of it uh, is represented as this so we take the, uh, the integral from minus infinity to k and then f of, uh, uh, f of z times dz so here fz becomes your probability density function or the intuitive meaning of it is representing the, the velocity or how fast your uh, probability is increasing around k okay so when z is around k okay in that case uh, the velocity of how fast the probability is increasing so that is the meaning of this probability density function but mathematically from here um, if we take the derivative with respect to z on this um, equation and then we get so this is a definition of probability density function for uh, z and then if this function cumulative distribution function is represented in, in this form and then once we take the derivative and then you obtain um, <clears throat> 
we obtain just f of z as probability density function. Okay, so this is a relationship between the cumulative density function uh, and also probability density function. <laughs> and here, back to this equate uh, this representation. So if we match this equation with the definition of a cumulative distribution function, and then we can easily see that um, this red part, uh, sorry, this uh, uh, yellow part is becoming our uh, probability density function. Okay, so that's why we obtain, let's see, that's why we obtain this additional form of 1 over x in addition to just normal distribution. Okay? So, finally we obtain this, yeah, just, let's just write the density function from here, then it will become 2 pi sigma, and then times x here, okay? Because we have an x here, then exp minus 2 sigma squared, log x minus mu squared. So that's why you obtain additional x here, okay? So, yeah, back to this, this guy. So again, x was a log normal distribution, which means if you take the log of an x, and then it follows normal distribution, okay? And then uh, the simplest thing that you will do is just to plug this log x in the place of the original x in the normal distribution, right? Yeah, so let me just write the original normal distribution density function. So it was 2 pi square root of pi times sigma and then exp and then minus 2 sigma squared, this is 2, x minus, uh, so yeah, let's change it to z, and then uh, it will become z minus mu squared, right? So this guy was the original definition of the uh, normal distribution, or normal density function. So since um, the log of an x is following the, following the normal distribution, we just plug the, this part with this log x, right? But that's not the end. That's not the end. We additionally have this part in the denominator. Okay? <clears throat> so that's because um, the relationship that's because of the relationship between x and uh, x and y, or x and log x, they have this kind of relationship when taking the derivative, and then this additional part became power of our density function. Okay. So <clears throat> the reason for um, the reason for uh, emphasizing this or uh, spending some time on proving this is because that's at the um, heart of, yeah, so I'm not sure if you're interested in or not, but uh, that's, the, um, uh, that's at the heart of like a chain rule or like a back propagation in deep learning, okay? So suddenly we, we hear the deep learning in, in this class, but uh, in the case of deep learning, uh, it's, uh, it's actually representing your uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning models as the sequence of the variables. So you start from the variable x that you are initially given and then this variable will change or will be transformed into y and then z and w and so on until you obtain the, the last variable that you're interested in. So that's why we have this kind of deep structure. So the meaning of depth is the number of transformation between these variables. So if you transformed original variable x into y and z and w and then 
we go through three transformations from x to y, y to z, and z to w, right? So these are a uh, number of transformations, uh, which is uh, three times in this case. So that is representing your depths in your uh, deep learning uh, model. And from here, um, <clears throat> the main key algorithm to uh, solve this problem or construct your deep learning model is basically uh, using this uh, chain rule. So chain rule means, so yeah, back to this uh, probability density function. So I describe this density function as a velocity. How fast your uh, probability is increasing at that particular point of an x, okay? So when x becomes like 5, and then uh, the velocity of increasing the probability has some value uh, computed from this density function, okay? But uh, if you went, yeah, so you only know the velocity for the y variable. So here in this case, we only know the velocity of how fast the probability is increasing. I mean, we only know that information for this y, but not directly on x that we are interested in, okay? But from this relationship about how this x is transformed into y, so here in this case, we took the log of an x. So that is our transformation, changing x to y. And this transformation is actually changing your velocity, okay? So here, in this case, how, yeah, how much or how does it change your uh, original velocity of how fast the probability is increasing is represented as this part. So, <clears throat> so from here, so suppose, yeah, in, yeah. So let's first ignore this part and then fx when, um, Let's see. So, so suppose x was 5, and then you just compute this part, which is the um, velocity in terms of the um, y, because it's the, telling us the velocity of y, because y is, taking, y is following the normal distribution. And that velocity was like uh, 30. And also this, uh, um, yeah, so one basic thing to note here is that this velocity can, uh, can be more than one, right? So density function, the values of density function can be more than one and uh, it can even be infinity, right? So that's uh, kind of a direct delta function. But still, this, type of, this kind of function should be integrated, I mean the integral of it over the entire possible range should be one, right? So that's the only requirement, so that we can call that as a probability density function. But anyways, so suppose this was a velocity, uh, 30, okay, when just uh, computing this part. But since this velocity is, uh, uh, this velocity was for y, okay, because y was following the normal distribution, and this is the velocity for y. And what is the velocity for x? The velocity for x is 30 over 6 because we have additional variable of an x, okay? So your x value is changing or influencing your velocity. So x becomes larger and larger and then uh, it, uh, it actually changes or it actually slows down your original velocity by the amount of value x. <coughs> okay? So that way, yeah, so yeah, uh, moving yeah, uh, from the perspective of deep learning, so we only know the velocity about the last variable, okay? And then by using the transformation, so if uh, the relationship between uh, z and w, and the w was the last variable that we know, and we only know the density function for this w, and then um, from the relationship, or uh, from, I mean, uh, based, on the, uh, based on how we transformed z to w, okay? That way we can change uh, the velocity corresponding to the previous variable, or z. And accordingly, we can uh, compute the velocity of y and even x, okay? So that is the main idea or the key, um, like a high-level understanding 
about the back propagation algorithm. Or it boils down to this kind of chain rule. Okay, so you, if you know how to uh, take the derivative for any functions, and then yeah, you can evaluate or you can compute or you can easily understand this uh, kind of back propagation and things like that. Okay, so <clears throat> um, so that's it for a norm log normal distribution, and then its mean and the variance is represented here. Okay. And also, uh, yeah, um, you guys don't uh, don't need to memorize these uh, because I will provide uh, kind of cheat sheets for all, uh, most of the yeah, most of the uh, density function definition and also its mean and the variance. So the cheat sheets uh, that you will have during your exam is posted online at the Blackboard. Okay, <clears throat> so. Probably that's the last part for chapter six. Any questions so far? Any questions about the exam? Before running out of competition, not watching. Yeah. 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 So I provide a, a cheat sheet, uh, which is just a physical printed version uh, during your exam next Monday. And also one announcement that I uh, that I have is, so it's kind of packed class. So uh, in total we have a one ten. Uh, students uh, taking this class, so it's impossible to accommodate all of you like uh, taking the exam in this class, t this room. So I uh, reserved two other rooms, which is a, a like a basement of this building. So there will be two other rooms. So um, I will just randomly pick up uh, uh, those students who has to take the exam on the in the downstairs. Okay, so please keep an eye on. Uh, though another announcement okay later this week so uh, so for those students uh, taking the exam downstairs uh, 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 those students uh, don't need to come to this room but should go to the maybe B 103 and 104 so we have two other rooms in downstairs another questions any questions Okay. Oops. And then, <clears throat> yeah. So while preparing for the exam, I realized one thing. Uh, 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 yeah, I I realized I missed one kind of important part. Okay. So uh, let me explain a little bit more about it. So that is about this gamma distribution and also the um, exponential distribution. Okay. So if you recall the story, or yeah, what we learned in this page was was uh, was as follows. So <clears throat> so we learned uh, exponential distribution as a special case of a gamma distribution. So a gamma distribution has alpha and beta as uh, two two parameters, alpha and gamma. Ah, uh, sorry, alpha and beta. And then when uh, setting alpha as one, and then we call that as exponential distribution. And that exponential distribution is actually related to the Poisson random variable or Poisson distribution. So the meaning of the Poisson random variable was the number of uh, event occurrences, right, within the uh, particular time frame, and that time frame was fixed. Okay. So if we recall what, what the Poisson random variable was, let's see. So this guy was Poisson random variable, and then t or uh, like three hours. Okay, so these three hours are <coughs> part of our parameter parameter in this Poisson random variable, right? So we are interested in the number of event occurrences within this fixed time frame of three hours. Okay, so that is uh, represented as this Poisson random variable. Okay. And then we considered, we considered, um, yeah, so from here, 
Yeah, Poisson random variable is, uh, fr from this Poisson random variable, we can also think about the Poisson process. And that Poisson process was representing the time point or timestamp of the first event occurrence, right? <clears throat> and if that timestamp was an X, and by the meaning that this was the first, I mean, timestamp for the first event occurrence. Uh, from that fact, we can, uh, yeah, we can know that there was no event occurrences, which means zero number of event occurrences within a uh, time frame of an X. Okay? <coughs> So, again, if the first event happened 3, um, 4, 31 p.m., okay, and then we, our starting time point is 12 p.m., okay, so this is like a zero hour, and this is like a 4, 31 p.m., or 4 hours, uh, 31 minutes, okay? <coughs> Okay, so this is a Poisson random process. And then, here in this case, I mean, uh, relax, relaxing Poisson random variable uh, in a way that we actually view this fixed time frame. So in the case of Poisson random variable, again, we are interested in the number of event occurrences, and that number of event occurrences are considered within this fixed time range. Okay, so that is part of our parameter. parameter. And so it's fixed value, but uh, we can we relax it so that this guy becomes our variable, okay? And then we think about the Poisson random variable of x, where lambda t, and here t is four thirty one p.m. Okay, so in this case, the 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 meaning of the the first time event occurrences, I mean the time point time point of first event occurrences is this is it's the same as we had a zero occurrences within this time frame. Right? And also lambda is fixed as well. So lambda is fixed in both cases in here and here. Okay? So that's how we yeah that's how we related this Poisson random variable and also the first time occurrence I mean, time point of the first event occurrence, uh, which is random uh, Poisson random process, okay? And then this Poisson random process is uh, related to exponential distribution, right? So what was the meaning of the exponential distribution? So exponential, the random variable for this exponential distribution was <coughs> uh, the time uh, taken for the first event occurrence, okay? So how long will it take? to see the first event uh, is occurring, okay? So here in this case, the first time, uh, first event occurred at 4.31, <coughs> but it can change, okay? And so how much this kind of time uh, will take for the first event occurrence? So that was the meaning of Poisson, uh, sorry, that was the meaning of ran, uh, the exponential random variable, okay? And then, if we recall this exponential random variable as a special case of gamma distribution where gamma, uh, sorry, uh, alpha was one, okay? And then beta became, so beta became lambda, right? So that's what we derived last time, okay? So among the um, alpha and beta in the gamma distribution, so beta was corresponding to the reciprocal of this lambda, uh, which was the original, which was originally the Poisson random variable parameter. Okay, but here in this case, from the perspective of gamma distribution, we are still fixing alpha as one. Okay, and then from these relationships, um, <clears throat> we can change also uh, the value of an alpha instead of just setting it as one. And so here in this case. When relaxing alpha as more than one or other than uh, the value of one is still related to Poisson random process. Okay, and then this guy is 
has the meaning of the number of events that are occurring. Okay, so back to this thing. So we were considering only one event occurring and its time point. Okay, so that was what we considered in this case. And then what, uh, so we can kind of change this situation so that we want to observe, for example, two event occurrences. And then how much time will it take to see the two event occurrences? Okay, and so the, if the first event occurred at this 4.31 p.m., and then the second, uh, second event occurred like 6.05 p.m., okay? Again, the first event occurred 4.31, and then the second uh, event occurred 6.05, okay? And then we can think about the random variable of this time point for this second uh, event occurrence. So again, 431, or the time point of the first event occurrence is represented as a Poisson uh, random process, okay? And then that distribution was represented as an exponential distribution. And then we now consider two event occurrences, and then we only consider or think about the time point of second event occurrence, which means when the second or when uh, how much time will it take to see the two events occurring okay so if, if this guy is inter uh, we are interested in this guy and then this guy is still a gamma distribution so again if time point was the first event occurrence and then it will become our exponential distribution which is a special case where alpha was set as 1 in the gamma distribution. But if we are interested in the second uh, ti uh, time point of the second event, and then that, I mean, that amount of time will be still uh, gamma distribution. But here in this case, uh, we, uh, this, this is corresponding to the case where uh, alpha was set as 2. Okay, so alpha has a physical meaning of the number of occurrences and then the random variable for this uh, gamma distribution when alpha was 2 is representing the time point or the the, the, the amount of time it, uh, it takes for seeing the second event occurring <coughs> so So that is, <clears throat> so if we, uh, yeah, if we think about this kind of physical meaning of this gamma distribution and its uh, application in, in this form, and then we can think, yeah, we can, uh, yeah, we can understand this example 6.17. So here, let's see. Um, no, not this one this guy. So here uh, we are interested in the time taken for two events occurring. And then on average per minute we see five calls. And so those two parameters are uh, were, yeah, represented as alpha and beta. So alpha has the physical meaning of the number of occurrences that we are interested in. And beta was still having the same meaning. What was the, the meaning of the beta? Beta was the reciprocal of lambda. Okay, so lambda was how, yeah, how much events are occurring per minute, okay, per unit time. And its reciprocal value or one over lambda is representing how much time uh, that it takes uh, for uh, between the two events occurs. I mean, the, between the two events occurring, okay. So if five, um, see, so if five calls are or five events are occurring per minute, and then the mean time between uh, between two events will be one over five minutes, which means 0.2 minutes, right? So this is our beta value, and that way we can set up 
or we can construct this gamma distribution and then here the question is like uh, uh, x is the time in minutes that uh, yeah that it takes uh, before two calls come two events are occurring okay so this is exactly the meaning of gamma distribution so uh, we have to just evaluate the uh, this, yeah, the gamma distribution and its uh, cumulative uh, distribution function. Okay. <clears throat> see. So, uh, this was not clearly shown or explained in our book, unfortunately. And uh, honestly, I didn't know that uh, until I read this book. I mean, uh, yeah, even after I read, read this book, so I uh, searched for a few blogs or uh, articles from the, from the internet, and then this guy was showing the, yeah, this kind of relationship that I just described between Poisson random variable and exponential distribution, and also uh, the, the general form of a gamma distribution, okay? So they have uh, relationships, uh, as, just, uh, uh, as I described just before. Okay, so... <clears throat> Any other questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. 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 그냥 mm -hmm. normal distribution에다가 x 대신 log x, log x가 normal이라니까 x 대신 log x를 붙이고 그 다음에 그 저희 분모에 x만 하나 더 붙이면 되죠. 그래서 이제 그건 쉽고 이제 mean and mean variance는 아까 여기에서 나타난 것처럼 뭐 이렇게 된다고 하네요. Okay, so any other questions? Okay, then uh, that's it for today. And good luck on your uh, exam next Monday. And also, uh, uh, we will not have the class next uh, Wednesday. And then we will meet again yeah, uh, the, the, uh, the Monday uh, in the following week. Okay, the following after. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. 캐시들 두명 있어요. 캐시들. 최윤재와 최민재. 그 친구들 중에 한 명한테 보는데. 마지막에 설명하신 게 알파는 1일 때가 맞았으면 하고 알파는 2일 때 이런 상황이 어떻게 감맞을 수 있으시잖아요. 근데 그게 어차피 포이즌 그거랑 연관돼 있다는 말씀이에요. 맞아요. 네. 그 이렇게 만약에 두 번이라 하면은 첫 번째 이벤트 발생하고 그 다음 이벤트 발생할 때 그게 어떤 관계로 있는 거예요? <웃음> 그러니까 그게요. 내가 증명은 지금 뭐 나도 뭐좀잘 이해를 정확하게 못했고 네. 그 저기 아, 아, 뭐 하여튼 그런데 이제 그 이게 블로그가 좀잘돼 있는 것 같고, 그러니까 우리가 이벤트가 이제 두 번을 따지잖아요. 두 번째 이벤트가 정확하게 뭐세 시간 만에 발생이 됐어. 그 말은요. 그세 시간 동안에 파스왕 랜덤 배열을 따지면. 아, 우리가 두 번의 이벤트가 정확하게 세 시간 만에 발생이 됐다는 건, 세 시간 이전까지는 한 번이나 영 번의 이벤트가 발생이 됐다는 뜻이에요. 그러면, 퍼스 랜덤 베리어블로 따지면, 퍼스 디스트리뷰션에서의 그, 그, 저기, 프라빌러티를 0일 때와 1일 때두 개를 합치면, 합치면 그게 암마 디스트리뷰션의 큐뮬러티브 디스트리뷰션이 된다는 뜻이에요. 아, 그러니까 예. 0일 땅 1일 땅 합치면, 예. 그게 px가 2보다 작을 때 그게. 그렇죠. 예, 네, 그렇죠. 예. 아, 네. 감사합니다. 그 지지 지난주에 그 중국에 돌아가는데 그 과제가 모르니까 혹시 다음 교실에 
かぜを寝取ってる。なんでイメージ上、ここで、これよ。絶対。全然やらなくてよ。はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、はい、뭐여러가지증빙이라든가뭐이런것들이일단은좀필요할것같아요、네、그래서그리고숙제는일단레이레이서비션은일단안받는걸로는지금정책적으로돼있는데일단스페셜케이스가이제뭔가보여줄수있으면요그레이장에서그냥학생들만이야기들을다이렇게듣고서그렇게해줄수많은또없거든요그래서이제혹,혹시뭐준비나이런게좀있을수있어요준비할수있으면안되나요혹시그게그냥네그러면일단은요좀생각을조금해봐야될것같아서이메일은안쓰고사정도그거를이제설명하는이메일좀간단하게보내주세요지금이야기하는것같은데<laughs> so, it's the number of inquiry answers that you have. So, you have so it's a first two chapter one, this is a letter to chapter one, chapter one, two, and three, four. And so, you have, yeah, you got the perfect score. Is this six or two? Maybe six. I, sorry, I believe it's a zero. Or, but the, uh, I believe your、uh, homework score、uh, was posted in the black one, so you should be able to check your score there. So, you can see.、Uh, So, yeah, from the point, from point wise,、uh, from out of 100 total points,、yeah, it will have about、uh, 15 points. It will take about 15 points.、Yeah. But、uh, it, may not, yeah, it may or may not be true. I mean,、uh, such kind of balance can, can vary. But I, yeah, that's at least what I tried. 